how to get these tanks out of here and show our stupidity. Hey, honey, you want to check that build? He thinks it's going to be a 10 minute job. Good morning, sweetie. Good morning, Lobby. Wow, this is a different spot. We're bringing you blown away from where the fuel tank normally is. Yeah. The reason why we're coming from here is because of the video itself. It's really relevant. We have our legs in what would normally be a fuel tank. Well, the fuel tank's not here, and what we're going to do in this video is talk about... Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. We just wanted to tell you that we got so much information that we have decided to break this into two videos. It's just too big for one. So in the first video, we're going to talk about why we removed our fuel tanks and how we removed them. What was the process? In the second video, we're going to talk about what did we do with the tanks after they were removed, why did our fuel tanks leak in the first place? How are we going to prevent this from ever happening again? And lastly, how our inexperience cost us a lot of time and money. And we'll give you the breakdown of all the costs for this repair. All right, so enjoy the video. Uh, and the reason why we do this and show our stupidity and <laughs> the things that we do wrong is so that we can pay it forward and Hopefully you guys will get a good chuckle and hopefully this is going to help you prevent this type of thing from happening to you because <laughs> even if you don't even pull the tanks out just watching it be done and seeing this done to your boat, it's painful, it's expensive, yeah. it's traumatic and anytime you do something like this, you know, there's hooking and unhooking hoses and that type of thing and there are bound to be some complications. And it's even doubly bad if you're in the Bahamas. They're so limited as far as resources, even somebody to repair your tank. Seems like every moment we turn around and something happens, it's a, a new topic for a video. <laughs> And it's a new growth experience for us, but it's and for, also... And for our credit card. Yeah. Do not hesitate to leave some comments down below if you have any questions. I'm sure there'll be questions. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button. You all, we really appreciate that. Hit the like button. Share it with your friends. Yep. Thank you so much, patrons, for and, uh, your we're generosity. We're leaving the link down below, and you know, that helps subsidize some of this stuff <laughs> that's happening. All right, sweetie, well, let's get started. The reason why we found this issue, the leaking fuel tanks, is because almost daily, maybe every other day, I like to look in, in all of our compartments, primarily the ones in the floor that are around the bilge or can give you access to the bilge because I'm looking for leaks for deterioration, erosions, water of any kind, because if you can catch that then before there's a bigger issue sometimes you can solve a problem so i much to my husband's chagrin find a lot of problems because i'm always looking down in these holes if it were up to me we'd be cruising around and i'd have the water up to my neck and i'd say <laughs> hey honey you want to check that bilge i don't think the pump's working we make a great team as far as that's concerned as much as i ham and haul at another issue it's really important to catch these things because they get worse. One thing about the issues that we're getting ready to talk about is that these are hidden issues. And by the time you get a hint, it's too late. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video where we tell you about things that you can do to prevent this. So I am particularly sensitive to this compartment because under this berth, we store our batteries and our inverter and we have had some issues with our hot water tank since we were in St. Martin. And I was always hypersensitive because if we have an issue with a hot water tank that gives way, all of that water, the coolant that's in there could actually damage our batteries in our inverter. So I'm peeking under there to make sure that nothing is going on that is harmful to the batteries than the inverter. We have on the slope under the batteries in the inverter, one of our absorbent rags. So I noticed over the course of time that our absorbent towel was red, which is the color of fuel. It's also the color of coolant, but we felt it and it was definitely fuel. After seeing the absorbent towel on this side, 
I was checking under our bed on the other side and there was a significant trail of fuel and it was orange in color which means that there was a mixture of corrosion from what was in the tank that was oh, going stuff. down the slope. Since we've been in the Abacos and I've been working with Lorenzo and have kind of been stuck here awaiting parts to arrive and we just love Lorenzo. We're going to put his contact information here on the screen for you. If you're a cruiser and you're coming to the Abacos and need any help, he is the person to call. He He's just wonderful. He's got a real laid back demeanor. Nothing shocks him. It, plus, he's worked at Maureen Sunsail. He knows these leopard boats especially. He took a look at our tanks and he said, let's see if CJ's welding could take the tanks and, and fix them for us. Well, we called CJ's and we're basically told, no, we don't have any time. We're about three weeks out. But then Lorenzo suggested that I go in person up to see if I could speak to Charles, who's the owner. Well, I just went in and was speaking to the assistant and she was saying, no, we have too many jobs. Then Charles walked out of the welding room. He saw our photographs and he said, no problem, we can do it Monday morning, 8 a.m. I was really excited leaving CJ's. Lorenzo was really thrilled for us. This was Friday. He said, we've got to get the tanks out on Saturday because he doesn't work on Sundays. That was where we left it. Well, then a couple of hours later, Lorenzo said, how much fuel is in your fuel tanks? Which we had just filled up and had about 170, 165 gallons in our fuel tanks. And he said, I can't find a place that can store your fuel. So this is now a pretty big problem because if we can't get the fuel out, we can't get the tanks fixed for Monday. You remember watching the soap opera, As the World Turns? We need to change the name of the channel to As the Boat Floats. Huh. Because, you know, this is our own little soap opera. When Lorenzo told us that he couldn't find any storage containers, we ended up getting on the cruiser net and thank you, Antares. They, they responded and said, there's a gentleman called Clay over in Hopetown that does all waste management and he might be able to help you call him. So we called Clay, this is now Friday night, and Clay said he could help us, but he was flying out on Saturday around noon, so we had to get there super early Saturday morning and he would be able to assist us, which was just great news. You know what I said to Clay? Clay, you're not only a good looking man, but you're a very powerful man. And it worked! Yes. So on Saturday morning at the crack of dawn, we picked up our anchor and headed over to Hopetown. We moored up on one of his mooring balls and then he did his magic. This guy can do anything. He is extremely resourceful and he just is a man of many talents and abilities. I'm a native of Hopetown and he came up alongside with this floating fuel tank. I think it could hold 500, 500 gallons. Mm -hmm. And he had an electric pump. He pumped it all out. And then he came aboard the boat and rigged up our fuel line and our sender to two five gallon diesel jugs. Are and he did that for each engine. Luckily, it was a calm day, so we didn't have to worry about, you know, the boat going back and forth and these things. So we can motor back with no problem without these cans spilling over and it worked beautifully. He was very sweet. He helped us measure the tank because he was thinking it might not actually fit out the doorway. And that is very common in boats. We met a couple yesterday who said that if they had to take their fuel tanks out, they would actually have to cut through the fiberglass to the get cockpit. the tanks out. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is figure out how to get these tanks out of here. And if there's enough room, it's gonna be crazy tight. And Clay has been so kind to do some measuring for us. He is a man with so many skills. That's 21 and three quarter to the top of this filler. The worst case scenario, try to get this, this piece off. The best thing about this is we've got double the pleasure with two fuel tanks. And so on each side, we get to do this stuff. We're gonna have to come in here and remove the molding. We're gonna have to move the door. Then it's gonna be just barely. Able to fit through. Yeah. Depending on which boat you have, it can be very disruptive and extremely expensive if you have to pull the whole deck out of the boat, so. But thankfully, we were just gonna have to pull off the molding and the doors, or and then, both berths. And then, <gasps> breathe in. 
On the way back to Marsh Harbor, we started pulling off the molding and the doors in preparation for Lorenzo to come and start disconnecting the for tanks. For the extraction. And when we got back to Marsh, we pulled into Harbor View Marina, which is now open. It doesn't have really any services, but we were really grateful that they were Thanks open to having us here. Then Lorenzo and DJ came. It was about three o'clock in the afternoon. Yep. <laughs> and started working on detaching all of the hoses. Man, that was really involved. Oh. Unless you're extremely resourceful and strong, you're gonna probably need some help with this. And those yeah. guys did a great job. It's a really tight space in here, incredibly tight. And they started to remove the tank on the port side. Lorenzo said, oh, don't worry. We can get it out the door. We've never had to remove the door and molding to get these tanks out. Well, it wouldn't fit. So all of us at one point, took the chisel, took the heat gun, and we're working oh, on horrible. trying to get an additional piece of molding out. But thankfully, Lorenzo did a little bit of banging on one oh, yeah. of the fittings that allowed it to squeeze through, and we just pushed it out. Scratched a little bit, but boy, that was much better than having to take the molding off. They did a fantastic job, but it took probably two and a half hours for each tank to get out of the boat. And they left the tanks then on the dock because it was just too late at that point to do anything. We've got the tanks out over here. We've also got a Halon fire extinguisher that's out that fell from the wall when I tried to move it and it exploded. So that's it was that, a very expensive day. Nobody yesterday. got hurt. That's a 400 bucks if you ever price out one of those. Oh. And it, it does not make a mess. That's the good thing. It just dissipates. If it would have been one of those powdered things, it would have just been a disaster. So here we are with our fuel tanks. Today, and, Lorenzo and DJ are going to come pick them up and wash them out with soap and water to prep them for the welder tomorrow. We're a little bit concerned though because we have found a lot more pitting than we thought was there. Yeah, it's not just going to be a weld this little section out. Like we thought it was type be. thing. And we're on a semi schedule. We've got the holidays coming. Mm -hmm. We only have one tank welder, and we're lucky to have them here in the Abaco. Charles is fitting this in. He thinks it's going to be a 10 minute job. I think one of the solutions is going to be replacing the bottom of the tanks with a little bit thicker aluminum. But well, we're going to have to find out what Charles's assessment is yeah. tomorrow. And we also need to find out what his time frame is because this was supposed to be a quick job. I don't know if he has the time. Well, I know he doesn't have the time for a long well, job. He's three weeks out. And we don't know how long of a job that is. So we thought that this tank was going to be the worst yeah. tank. And this was the worst spot. You can see all the oxidization and stuff right there. And it turns out the starboard, starboard is much worse. We're going to get these over here. All right. Katie's the CD welding for in the morning. All right, we'll see you at eight then in the morning. Yes.